All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab is in the house and welcome back to the channel today. I'm in the house with the Cheburk of Vrusiki here with me for a full review and we're gonna analyze the look, the sound and the feel of this bad boy, but hey, do not forget to like the video, subscribe right down this button below over here, leave me a comment, let me know what you guys think about uh, the stuff that I'm bringing to you, because uh, I want to know what is up with you, what do you guys think about this uh, uh, Rusiki Chaburko, for example, do you like it, you hate it, you love it, I don't know, let me know down below, it's gonna help tremendously this channel to keep growing, because uh, this is how um, the... Uh, YouTube algorithm is working so if you engage with me I'll reply back and uh, YouTube is gonna be happy and it's gonna uh, recommend my videos uh, uh, even more so I can keep bringing you this kind of stuff look at that certificate of authenticity on a plastic uh, card I like it uh, lots of information it is in Russian but you have some millimeters so you can decipher you can guess what is that about Foamy insert classic box, but whatever. We are here to talk about this fella over here. Uh, it's not uh, too big of a knife. This is the Rusiki Cheburkov. Uh, let's see. It has a 3.2 inch overall uh, length for the uh, cutting edge and a 4.25 inch long handle for an overall length of 7. Point, uh, almost 7.5, 7.45 I would say, but let's quickly check this guy up against, for example, you got a Benchmade mini bug out right over here and Benchmade bug out up there, and we are in the same realm of the full size bug out. Uh, for example, here you get the uh, Spyderco Para 3 and the Spyderco Para Military 2 to attest that this is in pretty much in the same league of the uh, Para 3 with a little bit better handle to blade ratio. Uh, another couple options going a little bit up in price. You have uh, Chris Reeve knives, a small Sebenza 21, and of course you got uh, the large Sebenza 21, um, also from Chris Reeve knives too. Again, uh, underline the size of this guy right in between these two options uh, from Chris Reeve Knives. Uh, let me show you another couple. Uh, here I've got uh, the Hindered um, XM18 and right up here North Arm Knives Kaha 2, uh, which is uh, a little bit bigger than that. And the XM18 definitely is uh, chubbier, thicker and longer than the Cheburkov. Let me go a little bit higher up in price guys and show you Maverick Concept, uh, that is the Sabre and something similar because it's also integral. This is the Peter Rassenti Large Nirvana 3.0 you can see this guy is right in between these two sizes and just last couple here because we're talking about Russian dudes. I have to show you another couple Russian beauties. Right up here you got Shirogorov Custom Division Neon NL and Shirogorov Custom Division F3. NS to complete the picture of this uh, Russian family. Right over here you have an idea of the size of the Cheburko Vrusiki. Um, it is an interesting knife. It's a titanium frame lock made in Russia uh, by uh, Cheburkov. It's uh, gonna cost you around $400 in that ballpark, more or less. Uh, and uh, it has an interesting look. Uh, I like it when it's closed. Uh, honestly, when it's deployed, I'm not a fan of this divot over here and the full belly. Probably not my favorite blade shape, but the handle, I, I kind of dig it. Um, very simple lines, a pretty clean look. Uh, you've got uh, um, uh, just a, a set of uh, titanium slabs as uh, scales, um, which are not uh, internally skeletonized by any means, so full weight. Uh, for these fellas. Um, you have uh, uh, chamfering on the outside, of course, nicely done. You have a little bit of uh, chamfering on the inside, which is always uh, nice and uh, I appreciate that. Uh, you have a 3D milling uh, going on on the scale. You see there is a little bit of curvature here, it's not just purely flat. Uh, Maybe the reflection is gonna help you understand that because it's uh, it's nicely done, I have to say. Uh, you got uh, basically a large finger groove which is pretty much allocate my two fingers uh, right over here. One is here and the pink is just kind of like left out because it's uh, not a big knife, uh, of course. 
you got a titanium backspacer with uh, some nice grooves on the side over here it's not like full it just stops right over here but it's enough to protect the blade which is nicely and deeply recessed and centered and you also have the space for the lanyard hole uh, lanyard um, cord sorry uh, which can go through uh, and around in th inside this loop around this pin right over here um, you got uh, a very very unobtrusive flipper tab look at this looks like it chopped off but it's made like that uh, and it's you see this it just like the shape is just meant to uh, be approached with a light switch movement uh, not so much for the push button I mean it's not gonna work you have to do the light switch um, you also have a very simple construction one handle screw one pivot screw which is blind on this side you can only access from this side and it's a t9 like this guy uh, so very interesting construction you got uh, the um, uh, the titanium tip up carry only pocket clip which is uh, um, has like a hidden hardware basically this is the uh, screw that is passing through and uh, uh, attaching and securing the clip in place um, and on this side as you can see you got the blind pivot screw and you just can tackle from this side only uh, this pivot is spinning so you might want to apply some pressure a little bit of duct tape maybe uh, you can also check out my maintenance video if you're curious to see how to take uh, this guide apart um, pretty straightforward disassembly process uh, you got these screws which are uh, it's sticking out a little bit not uh, that much uh, pretty much flush with the handles um, and then you've got uh, of course like this clip it's pretty cool it works nicely there's a little bit of high tension to it uh, it's I mean it's gonna retain the uh, knife in your pocket for sure and this much knife is gonna be showing up from your pocket when you're carrying it um, you also have a stainless steel lock face insert uh, right over here screwed in from the outside it's nicely done and uh, has a nice color actually metallic uh, kind of like looks like painted uh, right over there and then uh, you got a ceramic detent ball I don't know if you can see it but it's just right there there is no um, detent ball ramp so you're gonna feel a little bit of a hard step right there but you do have a um, integrated lock bar stabilizer right over here also what it's uh, nice to notice is the external lock bar relief uh, uh, cut so you see it's uh, nice and gentle I really appreciate it look at that it's very very thin up to this point but then it sweeps up maybe from the side you can appreciate that that is very nicely done it also extends on the actual frame the clip is just resting on the frame not on the lock bar to add any more tension so it's nicely designed I have to say it's a new it's a different thing so I, uh, I like that uh, keep in mind that the pocket clip is not reversible it's tip up carry only you cannot mount it on this side because you need like a cut out and it's just not gonna work uh, then you've, you've got uh, uh, this blade shape uh, with uh, which honestly I'm not like a fan of uh, there is no um, there's no jimping going on over here uh, you have a little bit of swedge down to the tip it's a dama steel blade of course with a flat grind you got Cheburkov logo right over here shining on the flat 100% um, belly sharpening choil right there chamfering around the um, flipper tab you got 2020 engraved in a in a in this uh in this area right over there on the other side you just got zdi 1016 which i'm assuming it's uh, the um serial number i'm not really sure guys let me know if you got uh, more information in the comments down below um and yeah you got i mean the, the, probably the profile is just not attracting to me um that much uh, but anyways let's check the uh spine thickness is going to be uh, 0.120 uh, inches and um, let's quickly see this uh, measurement uh, it's always tricky to measure this stuff but I would say right here right before that is going to be 0 0.017 so not too shabby it's pretty thin behind the edge uh, this guy and um, let's also check the sound this guy makes very subdued
inconspicuous, not loud. It's a nice clack, nice click, nice clack, but very subdued, very um, soft, not percussive, super mellow, nice and listenable. It's a, it's a discreet uh, gentleman's knife, for sure. Let's also check out the weight, because this guy feels um, uh, dense. I mean, there's no internal skeletonization going on. The titanium backspacer is going to reflect in 3.27 ounces. Are we correct? Uh, yeah, 326 ounces, so not super lightweight, but still doable. Uh, not many hot spots that I'm feeling in the handle if I squeeze it. Not really much sharp edges, just a little bit over here I can feel. There's no jimping, and I kind of feel the lack of it. It's a little bit slippery. Uh, there's a, a little bit of chamfering, tiny bit, but... Uh, I would have appreciated some jimping right over here to add a little bit of grippiness to this otherwise pretty smooth and a little bit slippery handle. Uh, you can do reverse grip pretty much, yeah, kind of. I mean, this, yeah, I, there's some meat missing over here for my hands, but uh, still, you can kind of do uh, the reverse grip, not so much the choke up grip because there's no finger choil, just like a sharpening choil. So it's not gonna be, you know, yeah, you can do like an advanced grip like that but not really like a forward grip like that so that's fine uh, you also have pretty some pretty solid structure because of this uh, backspacer but I don't know if you can appreciate you can actually see some gaps here and this is tight so fit and finish is not perfect on this one I have to say like uh, if I squeeze the handles I don't know if you can see but there's a tiny gap in between the backspacer and the, um, and the frame. I mean, nothing crazy, but still, uh, I noticed that and I just wanted to share with you. Um, also, you get a little bit of rattling and I was curious to know what was that. And it's this pin, uh, which is a tiny bit shorter and it rattles uh, a little bit, not a big deal, but still, it's something that I thought to point out for the fit and finish uh, stuff. Everything else is pretty flush. Uh, everything looks uh, in good uh, position and not, uh, I mean, the clip is nicely done. Everything sits pretty much perfectly. The blade is perfectly centered, so it's, uh, it's good. Um, the action also, it's nice. Uh, this is a tiny blade, so you gotta have to do to stick with the. Um, uh, you can do like you see, uh, it's not really like a push button. Push button is just uh, kinda, but it's more likely like the light switch that you're gonna stick with as a deployment method, but still, it's doable. And uh, when you deploy it, it's pretty fast because this guy is running on bearings. You see, you have like this thing. Vertical position, just give it a little nudge to get it close because there's no guillotine effect as you can see but still it's pretty satisfactory it's not the best action but it's uh, is uh, it's a decent one especially because the blade is uh, is pretty light so uh, you got a nice uh, uh, dialed in uh, detent for sure detent strength is on the medium side no detent ball ramp and you got a little bit of detent suction at the end with a little bit of a magnetic effect so overall i mean it's a well-made knife. It's a nice, uh, tiny, not tiny, I mean smaller, uh, everyday carry. Uh, I, I like uh, the, the handle more than the blade. Uh, overall, it's a, it's a nice knife. And uh, if that's up your alley, go for it. So there you have it. Hope you guys enjoy this video and thanks for watching. Stay tuned.